We're forward in A position. Sit up tall, slight squeeze between the shoulder blades. You, there's nothing showing here in the front, and the first thing I want you to do is to give a grip with your toes and fingers and give a spread. Today's date is December the 23rd, 2015, and this will be our last session for this year. And spread. Now remember, this movement, everything we do is done slowly and with control, and if anything we do causes you discomfort or pain, either don't do it or adjust it and do something different. Give a grip and spread and feet flat. Now come up on the balls of your feet, just on the right, and ease back down. And very slowly lift up and come just to the ball of your foot and then just as slowly ease back down. Good. Now one thing you need to do is try to focus on maintaining your posture. That is an exercise and it's important to have good posture because throughout the day if you slump, you're compressing your internal organs and if you can stay up tall it lets the uh, the blood flow be better and it's uh, much healthier for you. Squeeze up, lift up both toes, and ease back. Actually, all your toes, both sets of toes. Come up with the very tip of your toes. And that's a very thorough stretch in your feet. Now, when we do this movement and you focus on keeping it consistent and smooth, that is brain work. We call this purposeful or mindful movement. Now, we're going to lift the right knee, so you'll have to focus on keeping the chest up. Right knee up. Try not to let your shoulders move. And take it down. Good. And the left knee up. And ease back down. I forgot the silence of my phone. Right knee up. And slowly lower. And left knee up. And take it down. And bring the right knee up and do a slow ankle circle out. Circle. Now make a with your big toe, draw a circle. So it's up, out, down, and in, up, out, down, and in, and take it down. Oh, it may be over there, sorry. And now circle, circle. This movement is great <clears throat> to increase the circulation in our extremities. And if you have a neuropathy or have anybody who has circulation issues, it's a great movement to help increase that blood flow. Stay in tall, right knee up, ease it out, bring it in, and ease back down, and left. Just on the left side, top, you just flip the little switch. You don't have to have it, just, just right knee up. Sorry, I, did you get it? Great, thank you. And take it down, and left knee. Lift, extend. Bring it in and toe heel down. Now one thing you want to focus on with this work is to keep your knees apart and your feet out as well. Your heel should be underneath your knee. Now let's go ahead and bring that knee up again. Extend it out. Now hold it here. Give me a point. Flex. There's always a way to add a little bit more challenge to it. Point. Flex. Ease it in and down. And now lift. Lift up. Ease it out. Point. Flex. Point. Flex. Point, flex, bring the knee in and down, and now bring your feet together. Give it a little relief here in our hip flexors. Right leg is straight. Tilt forward and reach for your <coughs> ankle, and push your right shoulder towards your right knee, and release it. Now, this is flexibility work in our hamstring and our lower back. And here's the deal. Each one of us has our own level of ability, and it doesn't matter how far you go as long as you go to your potential. So do the best you can. Lean into it, push your right shoulder forward, and oh boy, that is a thorough hamstring stretch, and now push your right shoulder forward as well, and then bring it in, and now change. Left knee. Lean into it. If you push that, focus on that left shoulder push, you will get a stretch underneath your shoulder blade, and that is a good thing. We need that. Come on up, and again, lean into it. Push your left shoulder forward, and release it, and one more time. Lean into it, push your left shoulder forward. And release it. Now, go ahead and separate your knees. Brace here, holding your torso steady. Push your right shoulder forward, and release it. And left shoulder forward, and release it. 
and right shoulder forward. In this movement, try not to let your chest move. You just want to put your shoulder in front of your chest. And now sitting up in the middle of your back, bring your shoulder blades together in between along your spine and release it and squeeze. This is great work right here for posture. We need to keep the muscles in our back, upper back strong enough and of course in our core as well to help support our torso and release it and one more time squeeze between your shoulder blades and release it. Now go ahead keeping your shoulder steady lift your left hip and push it back and your right hip push it back and hip walk back and you'll notice that work in your lower back as you go back. Now bring your feet together and extend out and bring it in. This work right here helps warm up the synovial fluid in your knees and your joints. All of our joints have synovial fluid and that's why when you first get up and you're kind of stiff, um, your joints are not lubricated as well, but once you start moving, the lubrication spreads around and you're more comfortable in your movement. Now bring it up in this alternate pedal. And that's a, an advantage of, of movement. And pedal, 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 pedal. Now, point both toes, set forward, and now bring them in. As tight as you can. Feel that stretch in your Achilles tendon and your calf muscles. Point forward. And you're also getting work in your thighs. Bring your toes inward. And point forward. And bring your toes inward. And now take it down. Now, I want you to go ahead and uh, go to a stride. Sit deep in your chair. And this is called B position. Your back all the way against the chair. Right here, the first thing I want you to do is to push your knees towards the back wall. And release it. You'll notice there won't be a lot of motion. They won't go very far. But you're going to feel a lot of work specifically in your <laughs> hips. <coughs> and here's the deal. If you want to have flexible hips, then you need to work on hip flexibility. All there is to it. And press forward or back. And then release. Now keeping your head directly over your shoulders, I want you to tilt forward from the waist and just drop down until you feel the resistance in your hips or your back and then slowly come up. And this work right here is great for your hips and it's also great for your lower back. Straight spine press. The focus of this program, by the way, is flexibility and muscular endurance and we will work from head to toe. Come on up. And then again, straight spine press forward. All the movement is done slowly and gently and in each way you are encouraged to go to your full range of potential and if we do something that's not quite, you can't do, okay, we have a saying in here. We never say, I, we can't do it. We say, we're working on it. So if some of these movements are challenged for you or not even an option for you, then you do an alternate exercise or just do a little bit of it until your body responds to the movement that we're doing. Now this time when you go down, you go down a straight spine. Now tuck your chin to your chest, push your shoulders towards your knees, Lower back against the chair and round on up by pushing your lower back to the chair. And then the last thing to come up will be your chin. And let's do that again. Straight spine press. This is great work for your spine. Tuck, arch, shoulders forward. Push your lower back against the chair and round on up. And this is great work in your spine and your neck too. Straight spine press. Tuck arch, lower back against the chair, and round on up. Excellent. Now squeeze between your shoulder blades. Look at the ceiling. Keep the look and the squeeze as you lean, lean forward with your chest. Good. And then tuck, round, lower back against the chair. Come up one vertebrae at a time. Come on up. And that's some good stuff. Squeeze, lift your chin and lead with your chest. Keep the squeeze and the look and then when you get to the bottom, tuck, round and come on up. What's very encouraging about these movements, keep your back against the chair, side lean to the right, is if you do these on a regular basis, 
you will get stronger. You will become more flexible. You will be more comfortable in your body. And that is a great benefit. Side lean to the right. And come up. Now keep your hips in contact with your chair. Even the pressure with your hips. Try not to let the hips come up. Because then that puts the work in your torso. Now watch this. If you go over and you kind of let your hip come up or your knee come out, you're losing the stretch in your torso. The stretch is going somewhere else. So come back up. We're going to go back the same way. So keep your hips pressed to the chair, your knees in the position, and you side lean. And now this time, bring your trailing arm to the back of your head and keeping the arm straight. Good. And arm down and come on up. And side lean. That is great work in your lower back. It's amazing how healthy this can be for your backs. We don't use our backs a lot of time. And so then that's how we can get, uh, we ask it to do something that it's not prepared to do and it gets angry with us. So that's why we're doing movement. This is what we call getting our muscles prepared to do what we want to do. And the definition of a prepared muscle for us is flexible and toned. Now take that right arm around, follow it with your eyes and come back to front. You're doing a good job keeping your elbows at shoulder level. That's another element of this. Take it to the left. Here you're adding more of the network, which is good for all of us. Take your right hand around, follow it with your eyes. The good thing about this movement is because each one of us is responsible to make a decision on what we do. Uh, I can just say, I can demonstrate the movements and then you don't do what you don't need to do. Take it around one more time, push into it, and come back to front, and then one more time to the left. Take it around, follow it with your eyes. And back to front, and push you back against the chair, elbows press back. And come in front and give a squeeze. This is great work here in our shoulders. In the winter time, we need to have good shoulder flexibility to be able to put those garments on over our head, the sweatshirts, the uh, jackets, squeeze, and you know, turtlenecks, press back and grip and bring your elbows down. Now, go ahead and bring your uh, feet to the front, interlock your fingers here, and gently press through, and then release it, and gently press through, just to do your hands and your wrist. Now come down, and let's do a little grip here. Grip, now look right here, do a firm grip, and then put as much space between your fingers as you can, and then a firm grip, and space between your fingers. And now we're going to do wrist circles. These are done just like everything else we do. They're very slow and they're very thorough. If you do it quickly, do that with me. Notice, it's not, it's, it's, it's a different component to it and that's not what we're after. But if you slow that down and go very thoroughly and go into your full range of motion each direction, that's where the benefit comes from. And this movement is going very deep and very slow. This is one of those times in our lives when slow is better. And that's a good benefit. Now, grip and come to shoulder level. Now relax your neck and bend and reach inward. And fingertips up. <clears throat> We're gonna focus a little bit more on arms today. We've had a request for that. And this is a way to demonstrate that you don't have to have uh, equipment to work on your arms. We're just gonna use gravity. And some of y'all are going to be sorry that y'all said that. <laughs> <laughs> and up, uh, and press away, and release, and press away, <laughs> and release, and press away, and release. Now keep your neck relaxed, press away, and release. Now push your hands back, and let go, and press back. Now. I'm going to demonstrate something for you. If this is a little too much for you, what you can do is lower your arms just a little bit, and then you can, it's not quite as much of a challenge as more possible. And then your goal, though, is to get to where you can hold them straight away from the chair, I mean from the floor, and release it. Press. Now we're only going to do 15 more of these, and we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Press away, and release. Keep the wrist flexed as you slowly lower your arms and relax. Notice that work in your shoulders. That's a good thing. The right arm around, right by your ear. Here's another great exercise for shoulder flexibility. Right by your ear and reach back. And again, front, up, 
back and around. Change and go left. Front, up, back, and around. Front, up, back, and again. Forward, up, back, and that is some good work. Take both forward. It changes, it feels really deeper in your shoulders when you're doing both at the same time. And one more time. And now change and go the other way. We try to change up some of the movements that we do each exercise session, but we have several groups that we do every day. Uh, those four, I would say, one is uh, back, one is upper body, and then the other one is our legs. We do lunges and squats, and then, <laughs> what's the fourth one I always try to do? Yeah, core. That's right. Thank you. I always try to do core. Now bring your shoulders towards your ears and ease back down and press. And then even within that exercise group though, we try to do some different exercises just to keep it a little more interesting and to work your muscles in a different way. And exhale. All right, let's take a breath back against the chair. Breathe deeply as you reach. Put as much air in your lungs as you can. Exhale. Push it out. Push your hands back. And one more time. Deep breath. Breathe deeply. Reach for the sky. And exhale. And push it out. Very good. Now, go ahead and uh, walk your hips forward, keeping those shoulders steady. Going back to A. And the first thing I want you to do is to put your hands underneath your hips. We are going to lean back on our hands and uh, go ahead and walk your feet forward a little bit too. And we're just not even going to lift our hips up the first time. We're just going to lean back. Remember, if you cannot lift your hips up or you don't need to put weight on your arms, just do tricep extensions. This is going to work your arms. Now, one thing I do encourage you to do is that when we do upper body and you, it's not for you to do that, try to do something with your upper body. Don't go do your legs or something else because I still want you to work that muscle group so that we can get a balance. Now, if this, and most people, you should be, have the option of doing at least tricep presses. Now, the regular, what we're gonna do right now is just lean back on your hands. Just straighten your arms. You don't even have to lift up. And then release it and uh, lift up. That is a great lead up for being able to handle your body weight and release it. By the way, if you cannot manage your body weight with your arms, that's a red flag because there's lots of times that we need to be able to assist moving our body and our, with our arms, like getting in and out of bed or just lifting yourself up out of the tub. Um, so you, that's, a, that's a, a loss of independence when you cannot help manage your body weight with your arms. Now the next one is going to be just to lift up. If this is not an option for you, then go back and do the one we just did and take it down. Try to put your hands flat on the chair and you're, you're pretty much basically sitting on your hands. And then if this is not an option, do the one that you can do. That's the thing. I have a lot of people, when we start this class, they cannot do this. It's not an option for them. And then, but they get, they keep doing this on a regular basis and they get stronger. They get to where they can do it. It's really exciting. When you gain back abilities that you've lost, and remember, don't play the, it's because I'm getting old card. That's no excuse in this, in this program. Aging is not an excuse for losing your fitness. It's usually related to inactivity and so, or lifestyle. So just that aging is not, is not a reason to lose your fitness. Matter of fact, it's a reason to keep it. Because if you want to be independent as you age, you, you need to be working your muscles. Take a breath. And exhale. I have many people who've been doing this class for five, ten years, and even longer. I've some have been doing it for like 30 years. Uh, but they are, when they first, they're stronger now than they were five years ago. And that's pretty exciting. So come forward and let's do uh, tricep presses. Come up and then just go part of the way down, down and up, down and up, down and up. Good. Down and up. There are people in this room who could not do this when they started. And it doesn't matter where you are. You've got to start where you are and then build up. And exhale. 
And now we're going to do knee rotation. And uh, Mary Ann Slance is going to help me. Uh, I've told you before, if you have an injury or something uh, and it hurts you, you should not do it. So this actually hurts, part of this hurts me, so I'll only do one half, one leg, and Mary is going to demonstrate doing both. So boy, it's going to be right knee out and come back up, and then left knee out and come back up. Or do the one you could just do that was successful. Here we go. Come up. Here we go. Ready? Out. Two. Three. That's one. Out. I will only do one leg. Three. That's two. Out, two, three, last time, out, two, three, and to the chair. Good, take a breath. All the way to B, and breathe up. Now, a chair for you to use at home is just like a card table chair, or uh, like this, a steady, like a kitchen chair or something, but you need something that does not have wheels, of course, and it does not have arms. And uh, try to have one that's not too tall for you. And if you have one that has cushion, that's an advantage as well. Come forward, and Mary is going to demonstrate. <laughs> There's three different ways. There's one, one knee bent. And then the second level, <coughs> challenging, is both knees bent. And then the one with both legs straight or semi-straight, the best you can do, down and up. Excellent. Good job. All right, here we go. We're going to do four of those. You do whatever is in your fitness ability. That's all you, if you're doing the best you can, you're doing right. <coughs> Here we go, ready? Down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Good. Thank you, ma'am. And a breath. <laughs> and exhale. And breathe deeply as you reach. And exhale. Now. The next exercise we're going to do is for deep shoulder flexibility. If you have an injured shoulder, uh, you may want to rethink this or do something different. What we're going to do, we're going to come forward to A, and I want you to walk your feet forward, and you're just going to drop down and just hold this here a little bit. Hold, 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 and then come on up. Excellent. And now take a breath. And exhale, and breathe deeply as you reach. And exhale. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Now we're going to come back again to A. And I do encourage you to drink fluids while you're exercising, even this, uh, because your just body just needs to have plenty of fluids throughout the day. By the way, I don't know if you know, uh, you guys tell me, what are some of the benefits or reasons for drinking fluids, water especially. Yeah, it's to help remove waste. Uh, by the way, uh, this is this class is not just exercise; it's also an education. If you you when you when you use the bathroom when you when you uh, urinate, you want your the color of your fluids to be kind of a, like a color of lemonade or a light color. Uh, if it's real dark or if it has a real strong smell to you, that means that you are dehydrated. You need to drink more fluids. And I know as we get older, sometimes it's harder for us to uh, hold our uh, urine before we can get to the bathroom sometimes. So a lot of times people, will, or it's hard for them to even get to the bathroom. It's, it's physically uncomfortable. They can't even get up and down off the commode. So one thing that people will do is they'll quit drinking as much so they don't have to go to the bathroom as much. But that causes a lot of other health issues. So. Try to make sure you drink plenty of fluids, and the way you can tell is check, check out the color of your urine. Another thing is if you suffer from constipation, that's from dehydration too. If you have trouble with constipation, if you will drink more fluids, it will help eliminate that. Now, there may be some other health issues you have, but a lot of the reasons, a lot of times the reason for that is because of not drinking enough. Of course, you need to eat, you know, plenty of fiber and, and other things like that, but it's amazing how many people don't realize that that's a factor in constipation. All right, now we're going to do, I want you to uh, separate your knees a little bit and touch your hands lightly behind your uh, neck or the back of your head. Okay, this is, and I'm teaching opposition, so I'm saying this is your left elbow. It's really my right elbow, but because I'm facing you, it's we're in opposition. So take your left elbow over and touch it to your right knee, and then come up. And now right elbow over and touch and come up. Now, when I say over, I want you to turn from the waist, like turn your chest, and I take your uh, left elbow 
over and come up and now turn from the waist and take it over and touch to the knee. That is great work in your torso. It's also kind of a mental thing, uh, your coordination as well. Now, let's see how well you do on this. I usually have somebody mess up on this every time, but lately y'all been doing real well. Bring your right, right elbow in front of your face, turn towards your left, and take your right shoulder towards your right knee. Oh, there's one. Right to right, and then come up, and it's the same side. Turn and left shoulder to left knee. It's the same side. <laughs> and come up. Okay, now look. Now watch me do this, because I've got some people. Turn and then go side to side, right to right, and come up. Good, and now turn, and then left to left. Now notice that work in your torso, and that is good stuff. That's getting deep in the back, okay? Very good, now reach out. This is called eagle. Turn to the right and hug your right thigh. That may be my second hug for the day. Come up and turn to the left. If you live alone, this is a great way for you to get your hugs in. And then come up, turn to the right, and chest press and hug. Go up, turn to the left, chest press, and hug. Eagle up and come up. Now, I want you to touch your thumbs to your shoulder, turn to the right, chest press again, and reach your fingertip, your pinky, or whatever you reach there, your index finger, to the floor, thumb up, and lift up. Notice that torso work in this. Turn to the left, chest press, reach out as far as you can, touch and up do it again turn chest press reach up a thumb up and then torso up we call this the robot touch fingertips out thumbs to shoulder lift up good now I want you to do um, I want you to go ahead and just touch here and push your elbows back bring them down forward and around we're doing uh, shoulder circles by circling, focusing at the elbow. Front, up, back, and change and go the other way. Back, up, forward, and down. Back, and around, and down. Good. Now, I want you to go ahead and place your right hand on your left knee and your left hand on your right knee. Now notice, if you have a watch on or a ring, which hand's on top? Okay? Now separate your knees, and there is going to be a stretch in your shoulders. Now notice also you're getting lower back work. Now eagle up, and now put the other hand on top, and then press out. Push your knees away, and get that stretch in your shoulders. And then eagle up, and put the other hand on top. Switch them. Watch is down, watch is up, whichever way you got it. And then one more time, eagle out, and cross over, and stretch. And if you'll separate your knees a little bit, that is a real thorough shoulder stretch for you. And now come on up. Go to B position and breathe up. I don't know how much arm work we're getting today, but we're getting a lot of shoulder work. So <laughs> breathe up. <laughs> Feet together and now push, grab, just hold on here or interlock however you want to, but with your back against the chair, push your hands back more shoulder work and release it. Great shoulder flexibility. And release it and press back and release and come on down. Now, go ahead and come forward again. A position, just scoot hips forward. And I want you to lean back, slide forward a little bit, and now give me a navel, take your navel and press towards your spine. It's called a pelvic tilt. Okay, just scoop the seat under and pull your abdominals inward. Pull your right knee up and straighten the leg out and down. Now hug this as close to your chest as you can to still get your leg straight or straight as you can. Take it out and down and one more time. Take it out, grab low. Hamstring flexibility is a factor in the health of your back. If you have tight hamstrings, the way they attach into your hip or to your pelvic, it can cause lower back problems. So uh, it's important to keep your hamstrings flexible 
if no other reason but to help with your back. Another reason is for your just in your stride and you being able to reach or step forward or get in and out of a tub or get your foot up, grab low, your ease and comfort of movement. Us being humans like we are, we have a nature, our human nature, right leg is straight, is that if something is difficult for us, then we avoid it. And actually, when you're talking about your fitness, that's the exact opposite mentality you should have. If we have trouble with something, if we have a weakness, we need to focus on improving that weakness or decreasing that weakness, because if you don't, you're, losing, you're going to lose an ability that's going to be a factor in your independence. So example, women, a lot of times, we have a tendency to be weak in our upper body. Our arms are not designed to be powerful, but they can be strong. And if you lose the ability, if you lose your arm strength, then you're going to not be able to like help manage your body weight, get up and down. You're not going to be able to carry and tote and shift and move, and you lose the ability. The same thing with men. That's a lot of times their their weakness is a lot of times inflexibility in their hamstrings, especially in their shoulders and their backs and their inner thighs. It depends on the person. That's a generalization but they have a tendency to not stretch, to not do anything that would help improve that, um, that weakness, and that's not a good idea. Bring your right knee in, straighten the leg, and if your legs start getting weak on you, then a lot of times we avoid doing any things that require our legs, and guess what's gonna happen? You're just gonna keep getting weaker in your legs, and then you are going to lose a lot of your balance, and you're gonna lose your mobility, and then you're gonna lose your independence. And that's why we do these simple but effective movements because right leg is straight. These help strengthen us in a safe environment, sitting in a chair. And uh, most of our work is done sitting in a chair. And you can do it, if you have a hurt leg, then just do the leg that's not hurt. And it allows us the freedom of working, take it up and hold it. Hold it, hold it. It ha allows us the freedom of working on one area of our body while we isolate or protect the other parts. Lift up, slowly lower. This is a very important exercise right here for thigh strength, but also it's working your core. It's also working your hip flexors and then your hamstrings. And lift up and slowly lower. And one more time, lift it with a hold. Lift it up, hold, hold, excellent. And take it on down, good job. Take a breath. Breathe deeply. And exhale. And breathe deeply as you reach. And exhale. Now, go ahead and come forward to A again. And then back to C. Good pelvic tilt. Now, bring the right knee up and the left knee up. And tuck. Bring your knees to your chest and go halfway down, keep breathing, come back up, halfway down, come back up, halfway down, and come back up, slowly lower. Maybe one time we ought to videotape this with uh, the class, tape them with me talking in the background. Oh wait, go to you. now left knee up, because I wish they could see the work you guys are doing. Tuck. There's some old people in this room, and they're doing a great job. I mean, excuse me, chronologically gifted people in this room, and they are knocking this work out. And come up and slowly lower your knees. What is the saying? Anybody, an old person, is anybody older than you? <laughs> Take a breath. And just on the other end of that, for baby, like the kids who are three or four, they think babies are anybody younger than them. And come back down. It works both ends. All right, come forward again to A. Lean back, good pelvic tilt. Pull your abdominals in. Now, I want you to do, bring both knees up. V2, extend two, and slowly lower. Exhale here. Now, make sure let me demonstrate this real quick. This is important on this one. If you come up here, if you cannot keep your knees close to your chest when you extend, in other words, if it has to go like this, don't do it. Because this is contraindicated. It could, it puts a lot of stress on your lower back. So 
this one, you have to be able to keep your knees close to your chest to do that. If you can't, don't worry about it. It just means you need to work on your the strength. So do this part. While we're doing this exercise, you do this part. That's going to strengthen you in the area you need. Here we go again. Knees up. V2. Extend two. Slowly lower. Keep breathing. I can tell when you hold your breath because your face starts turning red and your eyeballs start bulging. So here we go. Knees up. V2. Extend two. And slowly lower your knees. Excellent. Take a breath. We are definitely keeping our abdominals strong. Strong abdominals are very important to be the contra, I mean the antagonistic or the opposite muscles from our back. So this helps keep our back strong. Now come forward, what we call A. Turn sideways, and this is like a sitting lunge. Notice this position, the uh, knee and fire in alignment, and the heels underneath this knee. Get your weight over your feet and press up with those strong legs. Come behind the chair. And we are going to do some standing exercises. Now, if standing is not an option for you, you go back and stay in the chair and just do some of the exercises we just did. Or you may have had enough. You don't have to do this full hour workout. Let's come up on the balls of our feet and ease back down. Here we're doing more work in our feet, ankles, calves, shins. And this is great for us to uh, just to keep our lower legs, our lower limbs strong. Take it down. Now, I want you to go ahead and take your knees forward a little bit and drop down. It's, this is one time you can take your knees forward and sink down into the ankle flexibility. And doing this, can you feel that stretch in the Achilles tendon and the calf muscle? Yes. Okay. That is a, I'm going to come out from behind this chair because it may be hard for you to see what I'm doing. Uh, most of the times when we do squats, we push our hips back and we don't let our knees come forward like this. But this is the time I want you to come forward, sink down, and do, go down as far as you can into the ankle flexibility. And that is a very thorough stretch. I bet you could do this in the grocery store line. You could do this and not get too many weird looks. That's a great stretch. <laughs> All right, now go ahead and go to a wide stride. Turn your toes out and take your knees, press them back a little bit as you drop your hips down, and come on up. Now just make sure that you're in a safe position where your feet won't slide. Um, if you are on carpet, you should be okay, but if you're on tile or wood, be careful about having socks on unless you put something under your feet, like a yoga mat or some type of mat to keep you from sliding. Drop down and come up. I have a, I have a homework assignment for y'all. We watched Elf last night. Do y'all remember that movie? Have y'all watched that movie where he goes up the escalator where he has one foot and just keeps going? He's going up in a split? Okay, that's your homework. The next time y'all go on the escalator, I want you to go up like Elf goes up and press up. And you can really work on your inner thigh. It's a joke. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Drop down. <laughs> straighten your right leg. He's over the side. Come back to middle and straighten your left leg and come back to center. But I, what made me think about that, hmm, all this hip flexibility we're doing right here, and inner thigh, come back to middle. Now come on up. Take a breath. My class is being particularly quiet today. They're usually moaning and groaning and saying stuff, uh, and it's okay for you to do that. They're just being very well behaved today. Now right here, cross in front, and reach for the sky and push back. And then cross slow and control, just like everything else we do. Reach up and press back, and now change and go the other way. Take it back. Reach for the sky all the way through your ribs and shoulders, and cross as far to the side wall as you can. And cross, reach, and cross again. Excellent. Now we're doing our squats, as I showed you a minute ago. Let me turn this chair this way so you can see me better. And now feet about shoulder width apart. Push your hips towards the back wall and sink down over your knees. You should literally be able to tap your toes. You want your weight. 
and make sure your knees are behind your toes. Come on up and drop down again. Now keep your shoulders up as much as you can. You drop from the hips, not forward from the waist. Okay, so keep your shoulders up. And that may make you feel a little precarious, uh, but that's a good balance challenge. And come up. Now the chair is here. Anytime we're standing, we have the chair here for balance to help us. You can hold on to this if you need to. Come down again. And you can add tricep presses to this. I just don't always try to do that when I'm teaching new people because it's just something else to think about. Come up. And this time when you go down, come up on the balls of your feet. That is a real thorough challenge balance and work in your thighs. Heels down and press up. We may, may need to go out on the balls of our feet leaving today. The parking lot's gonna be flooded. We've got a storm going on outside. Come down, come up on the balls of your feet. Hold, hold, good. Heels down and press up. And now this time we're gonna lift the right heel and alternate pedal. Pedal, two. If somebody brought an umbrella in, they're gonna be somebody's new best friend. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Heels down, hold it, hold it, come on up. Now Bill didn't say anything about me not doing enough leg work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and breathe deeply as you reach. I'm gonna keep my zipper closed. <laughs> we'll teach you. All right, now touch the top of your right foot behind. And change and left foot behind. Now touch the top of your foot to the floor if you can. That's a real thorough stretch. And when we first started doing this, we got a cramp every time. And then, but after we did it more regularly, guess what? That your foot doesn't cramp anymore. So you are preparing those muscles to handle more and with better results. That's, that's what's gonna happen to you if you keep on doing this, this movement. It's gonna get easier, it's going to get better, and you're going to notice the benefits throughout your day. It's just amazing. And apparently I'm having a balance issue right there. Okay, turn to the right. Now I'm going to turn this back so you can see. Yeah, and my, uh, Mary is going to come up and join me. Again, I have a hamstring issue, so I only go part of the way down, and she's going to give a better role model. Show me this way, this way. This way. You, yeah, you do have, yeah, that's pretty okay. good. And, but here's the deal. That's the point I want to make. It doesn't matter if you do exactly everything it's like just do the best you can and you're going to still improve your fitness all right now now we're going to demonstrate a wide stride take the back knee towards the floor to the floor if you can and notice the position here the front the knee i mean the heel is underneath the front knee and the back toe i mean you're straight up and down now now right here just while we're here just lean back a little bit and that is a very thorough thigh stretch you don't even have to go very far release it you put your back toe down just for a minute and then lean back a little bit more. And that's a very thorough thigh stretch. Now tuck that toe under and press up. Now if you need to use a chair to cut up, that's okay. Just do the best you can. All right, here we go. Here's our lunge workout. Drop the back knee towards the floor. Keep your weight shifted back. It's on the back leg. Shift back more. Okay, come up and take it down and do little presses. Now I have people down a little bit and up. Lunges is not everybody's friends. So do another exercise, down and up, down. Or like do lunges again, or you can do chair sits. And uh, now back knee towards the floor. Or wall sits, down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. And now a slow, oh, we come, we come out of there, come out of it. And go back into it to give your foot a little relief and now back knee down slowly forward down two three touch and notice i'm only going part of the way down and again because it hurts my other leg but that's okay down touch and when i say touch up two three that means touch the low as you can go down two three touch shift your weight back it's on the, the back leg is the work leg down two three touch up two, three, and come out of it. Take a breath. And exhale. And then breathe deeply as you reach. 
Susan, look, make sure she's in the video, in that screen there, Doris. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Now turn back to the uh, left, wide stride. And now notice, when I say the work's in the back leg, I am literally trying to take my back knee towards that spot. Okay, you notice that? I'm, I'm focusing on the back leg. Okay, and so it's not this, it's this, straight up and down. <clears throat> Good. All right, here we go. Now scoop the back seat under, lift the back heel, and just take it down and hold it. Hold, 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 and press up, and back knee down, and little presses. Down a little bit, and up, down a little bit, and up. Way to keep your shoulders up. Down a little bit, and up, down a little bit, and up. Now back knee to the floor. Down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Excellent. Come out of it. Go back into it. Some of you are doing this without holding on to your chair, and that's great. That's a great challenge, uh, a balance challenge. Slowly forward. Down, two, three, touch. Up, two, three, and again. Down, two, three, touch, up, two, three, two more, down, two, three, touch, up, two, three, last time, down, two, three, touch, up, two, three, and come out of it. Would you mind coming up here either behind us or right front and be doing those alternate exercises while we do our others so they'll have some good ideas? That'd be great. Just right back. Let me go back, and they can still see you. And then, so she's going to do some alternate exercises where you're sitting in a chair that are great to do when lunges are not your friend. Thank you. All right, turn back to the right. We are going to do super slows. If you have not been exercising regularly, you just want to skip over this part, or. Just do one or two. Or what Doris is doing. Or, 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 or that's the other thing. Then do these. This is what you need to do. Okay, these are going to be eight counts, so they're slower. Ready? Down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch. Up, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one. Down, two, three. Way to keep your shoulders up and weight back. Six, seven, touch. Up, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more. Down, two, three, four. And she'll share, share watching too. Seven, touch. Of course, we have another side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last time, down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, touch, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's enough of that. Take a breath. And exhale, and breathe deeper, deeply as you reach, deeper, deeper. And exhale, now that is definitely going to make your legs stronger. You're welcome. <laughs> Wide stride. <laughs> now, super slow again. Ready? Down. Two. Or alternate exercise. Three, four, five, six, seven. Touch. Up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again. Down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Touch. Up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, two more, down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, last time, good, down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch, up, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, and we got it done. Come back to front. Take a breath. Good work. Good job, guys. And exhale. 
Forever Fit is not for wimps. That is quite a challenge. Breathe up. Now, if you get sore from doing this, I would suggest you do some walking tomorrow. If you get to a pool, do some swimming, and maybe take some type of anti-inflammatory. Thank you very much, my ladies. All right, come back to your chair. And leave. we're going to do a foot massage. So if you have your socks on, slip them off. Oh, neck too. Yes. We're going to do our feet right after we do our neck. I do take requests. So <laughs> just be careful what you ask for. I'm hiding. <laughs> okay. Now, for neck, I'm going to go a few minutes over. Is that okay with you guys? If you need to go, just have to just go ahead and go. Okay, come to kind of halfway, C plus, B minus. Get halfway. Take a deep breath here. And exhale, just kind of relax. Hands are in your lap. And this is one time you can let your abs go. You can relax. I want you to let it all hang out. Okay, take a breath. And exhale. Now tilt your chin towards your chest. And then release it. Now I have been having some neck issues, so I've been doing neck stretches a lot during the day. Tuck your chin and release. And one more time. That we're, stretching is very therapeutic. It's relaxing, but it's, 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 it's just very it's peaceful. It's calming. Tuck your chin. And we need those things, especially during the holiday season. And release it. Now one more time. Take your chin forward. Reach behind and press it forward. Letting your neck relax. When you're doing stretching, flexibility work, deep in a joint, relax what you're stretching. Now take your, take your, keep your nose forward, and you're just going to tilt your head sideways. So in other words, it's here, not here. Okay, so keep your nose forward and just like you're trying to uh, get eat water out of your ear. Take your right ear to your right shoulder. And I'm telling you, that is a very thorough stretch. If you've got some issues on this side, you can feel it very quickly. And relax it. And right to right. But after you stretch this, it will feel better. And release it. And one more time, right to right. Now reach across and gently pull. Relax what you're stretching. And release it. And now left to left. If you have neck issues, if you have uh, like flexibility or if your neck gets tired, you get uh, cricks in your neck all the time, that means that muscle is not toned and flexible. So you definitely need to do release. You need to do neck work. There are muscles in your neck just like any other part of our body and they need to be stretched and they need to be exercised. And they will benefit from that and therefore you will benefit and release. Now turn and look over your right shoulder as far as you can. Because our shoulders, and release a little bit, are stabilized by the chair, you're going specifically in the neck muscles. Nothing else is moving and that's we go very deep. And that's the way Forever Fit works. You hold most of your body steady and then you go deep in one area and it's, it's deeper because you are isolating it. Now slowly turn your head so you won't get dizzy and look over your left shoulder as far as you can. We need this skill, release it, to be able to change lanes or to uh, look behind you to back up and when we lose that neck flexibility, it's painful to do that. So you don't, and then you're a lot higher risk. Look over your left shoulder. As far as you can, push into it and release it. All right, come up and take a breath. And exhale, and one more time, breathe deeply as you reach. Now, this may be your next favorite exercise or group of exercises we do. This is, okay, take your foot across, and this is a good movement right here. I didn't do this earlier because I'm going to combine this with a foot massage. So your, your lower leg is against your thigh, and what I want you to do is with your left hand, top of your foot, just bend your toes down. It's going to stretch the top of your foot, and then take them back. We need to work on our feet and the toe flexibility just like any other body part. They need this. This is a great thing to do in the winter time. Um, after you have had your shower or bath, go ahead and get you some good uh, cream 
or a lubricant and put this on your feet. Now what I want you to do right here is just to take your toe pads and rub your toe pads individually. And then move on, just rub all your toe pads and then just kind of rub underneath your toes, the very, like right here. Just massage there. Now you've got your fingertips on the top of your foot. Hold very gently there and then use both feet to massage. And now you're going down to the ball of your foot. This is also good to work on your hands gripping motion. Come on down to the arch of your foot and come on down to that wonderful, hard, strong heel. And check, and while you're doing this, it's a good time to check your feet for the health of your skin, to check to make sure you don't have any bunions or blisters or bad places. Now, grip your foot right here, and now with your fingertips, grab your little toe and work it all the way around. We're gonna play this little piggy with ourselves, but we're starting with the little piggy. And now go to the ring piggy, and now the middle, and now the index. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Aren't you glad you came? And now the big toe. Take it all the way around. <laughs> Gotta do. You can go ahead and squeal if you want to. That's fine. And now, if you have a big old ring, roll it around. I want you to go from the knuckle from the and from your hand to the middle knuckle. Put that against the arch of your foot. I mean, I'm sorry, the ball of your foot and strip it down all the way down. And press in and strip down and press in and strip down. And now put your thumb on the middle, on the arch, and now just kind of twist it and come across your foot. Twist, and come across, and twist, and come across. Now, go ahead and put that foot down, and I want you to notice how good it feels, that good stimulation you have. Put the foot, other foot across and lean into it, and take it, these toes down, and take them up, and take them down, and up, and one more time. Down, and up. This is great work for your feet. Lightly, kind of work the pads of your toes, and now go to the other two, and now to the middle one, and now massage. I'm gonna kind of, well, I won't instruct as much on this, and just go underneath. I'm gonna turn this way though so you can see better. And now rub the balls of your feet. And now the arch of your feet. This is great stimulation for your skin. And now the big old important strong heel. And now, oh, roll your big old diamond in. Push here and press it. Strip all the way down. Press and strip. And one more time, press and strip. Oh, I gotta do this little piggy. I gotta go back to that and then twist it and take it out. Twist and take it out, and one more time, twist, and take it out. Now, work your little toe all the way down to the joint of your foot, and now the ring toe. This brings back memories for y'all. <laughs> Middle toe, index toe, and now that big old toe. Now do one more strip to kind of finish it off. Strip it off, and strip it off. And now notice the great stimulation, how happy your feet are. Happy, happy feet. This is good for all that we ask them to do. All right, take a breath, breathe up. And exhale, and breathe deeply as we reach. And exhale. All right, we are done. Good job, guys. <laughs>